Welcome to Positive Talk Radio. Our goal is simple, to explore evolving ideas one conversation at a time. So stay with us as right now we present. Hey, you know, it's a new year. It's 2023 and that's January. It's early January and you may have recovered from your hangover from New Year's Eve by now. And you've also probably made a commitment or two to yourself to live life a little bit better and and to maybe have a um, a uh, New Year's resolution or two and all that kind of stuff. Well, I have got a wonderful gal that we're going to be talking to. Her name is Blair Shiver, and she is a nutritionist. She has got a, a store in the Florida Keys that is called Food for Thought, and it's a natural food store and organic cafe. And uh, she knows a lot about the stuff that you probably you're saying to yourself, I should eat better. I really should. And so she can help us with that a little bit. And uh, so, Blair, how are you today? It's great to have you on the show. I'm amazing, Kevin. Thank you so much for having me back. It's a pleasure to be here. I know you're amazing. And (laughs) (laughs) it's it's just uh, it's, it's awesome that you're here because this is the time of year when now you you have a a natural food store do you find that january you're busier than most months um yes but not for the reason that you might think here in south florida we are moving into our high season because everywhere else in the country it's freezing cold (laughs) and um i don't want to rub it in that we have a cold a cool front coming this weekend where we'll dip down into the 60s in the evening, but be well into the high 70s and low 80s. I think, actually, I think we're only going to get to into the 70s for a high this weekend. So everyone's preparing for that cold front. But yes, we welcome a lot of people into our store this time of year because everybody is looking to get healthy, but also because a lot of people are coming to warm up and thaw out in South Florida. There are 290 million peoples that are envious of you right now. <laughs> I'm not rubbing it in, but come see us. <laughs> <laughs> and so good. So the winter time for you is a, is a busy time regardless. It is a very busy time. And actually I'm really excited because, um, We have a Celtic festival going on here in Marathon this weekend where some amazing um, Celtic music performers from across the country and globe, if we're being honest, will be convening here in Marathon in um, the community park. And it's such a great opportunity. You know, there's a lot of trap rock down here, which we love. We're grateful for our trap rock and our live music, but it's so exciting to hear some um, live live music that's a little bit different and we have some great performers from all over the globe coming to little old marathon oh that's that's awesome Mm -hmm. and you know i was talking with a a gentleman from scotland uh not too long ago and i and uh, he was talking about kilts so there'll be plenty of kilts there i would assume there will be kilts there will be haggis there will be um sheep herding it's it's such a fun event and it benefits actually i have to do a little plug um, it benefits St. Columba Church's a, a hammock house um, after school program that is the Celtic Festival funds that fully. Um, it, so it's free child care for people like myself who have amazing kids, um, but we have to work. And so the Celtic Festival benefits that program. It's a beautiful, beautiful asset to this community. Oh, that's 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 really cool. Now, I don't want to mm-hmm. stir your imagination at all, but this gentleman <laughs> from Scotland was telling me that when you wear a kilt, you don't wear anything underneath it. And you know, you see a lot of gentlemen at the community <laughs> park in Marathon wearing those kilts. And listen, as a woman who likes to wear dresses and skirts, you can't blame them for wanting to appreciate that fresh, gentle breeze, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's that's something that we just don't get a lot of going because we generally yeah. wear pants. Don't be jealous, but you know, maybe you need to, maybe you need to find your family's uh, lineage and get your, your family's kilt, your print and, and have a kilt made for yourself, Kevin. Well, I mean, McDonald, my... that's Scottish, right? I know it's Scots Irish. And okay. uh, depending, depending on what side of the border you are on at any particular time, McDonald is, is purely a Scottish and McDonald is supposed to be more Irish, but. Interesting. But, okay. But I, that I don't know, but now my son does have the uh, tartan. That, uh, Tartan, that's what it's called. Thank you. That's the word I was looking for. Thank you. 
Yeah, so we we do we do have that, but I don't want to scare anybody because I so I'm not wearing a kilt. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you're missing out, buddy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, see, t- today it is um, 42 and raining, and so you, we could do it. And I suppose we could do it in the summertime, but then uh, I next I, year, Kevin, put it on your calendar. See, and I just don't know how you guys do it because it's kind of like I would feel like uh, I'm I'm almost you know like illegal, um, having yeah. having the having the wind blowing up your skirt as it were. So funny story. I have um, an attorney friend the, from the hometown that I grew up in Georgia planning a trip to Key West, and if you really want to push the boundaries of decent and indecent exposure, do yourself a favor and Google Fantasy Fest. Check that out. Look the fo- Look at the photos. There are some things that can't be unseen, and I'm just going to leave it at that. It, it's it's not a clothing optional thing, is it? I'll let you check it out for yourself and find out, Kevin. You know, I I would not mind a clothing optional thing, except for the fact that every time that you know, because there are a few um, uh, places like that here when I was younger, and the only people I saw were old fat men. <laughs> And that were that that had a beer belly out to here, and it's like, don't you think it would be better for everybody if you put something on? It's kind of like a nude beach, you know. You don't go to a nude beach and always see the most attractive people. Fantasy Fest has a good mix of both, but it is an interesting eclectic mix. Yes, we'll just we'll leave it at that. Body paint is a very popular thing, though. I think there has been a push in recent years to make Fantasy Fest a little bit more. Family friendly, which would be interesting to see how they're going to be able to do that. Uh, I've never been in 15 years that I've lived in the Keys. I'm not a huge fan of crowds, except for live music. I can, I can, I can force myself into a crowd for live music, but not for naked not for people that. painted. Yeah. No, 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 it's not worth it. <laughs> we we have a similar uh, festival up here in Fremont where people do body paint and then they ride bicycles. I don't know oh, how that works oh, necessarily. No. Hard pass. <laughs> <laughs> that would not be, it's, it's like, you know, there are, um, I don't know, there are tender parts and that you hit with a bicycle seat. If you did it, if you did it, there are, so many better things I could think of to do than ride a bicycle while naked. I mean, <laughs> yeah, just throwing that out there. I know. Well, some people, <laughs> it's interesting that some people are just, they, they get a weird thing going on and, uh, different oh, strokes, look at this. right, Kevin? Huh? Different strokes, right? I suppose. By the way, John Cole's here and he says, hi, Blair and Kevin late to the party, but excited to listen. Hi, this John Cole. How are you? As we, Happy New Year, my friend. As he just tuned in, we were talking about naked people. So I'm sure that he, <laughs> he's wondering where the heck this show is going. Well, we are talking about um, identifying your why, why you want to make healthy choices in the New Year. So I think that's a perfect segue, Kevin. It, if you exactly. want to prepare for Fantasy Fest in October of 2023, let's talk about getting healthy now, right? If if you want to be able to see your well, you never mind. I'm not going to go there, but uh, <laughs> okay, we'll leave it at that. but it would be it would be really handy if uh, um, you know because in, in in this year it'll be a great thing to do to lose weight and to feel better and and to and to uh, and stuff. So you do that in, in every day where you're at, um, and because you've got. Um, breakfast and lunch items you do vegan you do which i don't understand explain this to me why does vegan bread uh feel and taste like a brick um i'm not a baker so i'm not gonna pontificate on that um but because i think you're using um plant-based ingredients instead of eggs and milk um baking in itself is a science that is beyond my comprehension. So I source out the things that I can't do to people better at it than I am. Um, But vegan baked goods tend to use nut flours. So for instance, almonds, you see flax, a lot of sprouted grains. So they are more dense and more beneficial for your body, but they are different than what we're accustomed to eating. 
So it, it was very interesting to me um, because again, like I said, baking is not my thing um, to really understand why, why are breads that are better for us are kept in a freezer because, you know, sprouted grain bread, which we serve here at food for thought for our sandwiches. Um, they're a little bit healthier, but a lot of those healthier products don't have the preservatives um, that maybe aren't so good for our body. So, you know, um, again, I can't go into an in-depth scientific explanation behind it, but just at the surface level, that would be why I could explain that a lot of the vegan baked goods are, have a great night, thank you so much, um, are a lot more dense. And um, yeah, so that's it. That's the short answer to that question, Kevin. Was that a customer <laughs> that was just leaving that you said thank you? No, that you? was that was a colleague. That was a colleague. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, you're closed now. You're closed now. Yes, is... we are. It's officially just me. I figured it might be quiet, quieter here in the evening than in my home with my two dogs, my six-year-old, and my husband. <laughs> Good call. Mm -hmm. Good call. Mm -hmm. I, 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 okay, so I know you, you have done a lot of research in this, and I'm just finding out about it. Um, it there's something called Beyond Meat. Are you familiar with that? We sell a lot of Beyond products here in our store. Mm-hmm. Now I'm concerned because it's obviously it's it's a vegetable that is put you know that they that they put together and then it's got the consistency. I'm told I haven't tried it yet, but it's got the consistency and the taste of of meat. But so what chemicals do or do they, they? I would think they would put chemicals in that to achieve that. So is Beyond Meat, even though you're a vegan. Or a vegetarian. I'm not vegan. Just so we, just so we're clear. No, no. Thank, okay. Thank, yeah. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm proud of you for that because I can't do that. But, but, but my. I like to eat plant based and as healthy as possible, but I do still eat some. I still eat cheese and eggs and some animal protein products. Um, it is a very. It, 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 there's a lot of benefits to eating a plant based diet. Um, and I try to eat plant-based as much as possible. My focus is more on eating whole foods. Mm. So, um, in, so what does a Beyond Burger taste like? I will tell you that we have spoken to if not representatives from Beyond Meat. And it's interest, an interesting observation that people who eat exclusively vegan diets typically don't enjoy Beyond Meat products. And the reason is Beyond Meat products were not developed for vegans. Beyond Meat products were developed for meat eaters. If you can put, do a side-by-side -side comparison of a Beyond Meat burger and a lean beef burger, nutritionally, there's not a lot of difference. The biggest difference is how do I say this in a way? <laughs> um, <clears throat> We're talking about amazing. naked people earlier. You can say it. <laughs> I know. You know. I, like all the gloves are off, right? Um, so to answer your question, Beyond Burgers are delicious. They are very comparable, in my opinion, to a beef burger because they have put beets in there to make it look red, like a rare, like a rare oh, burger. Gotcha. The fat content, I'm not. I, I could run back there and grab a package and tell you the source of the fat, but the fat content to like a, say a 90 to 95% lean beef burger is not that far off. So the fat content, the, there's a smoky taste to them and the coloring nutritionally, they're not that different. The biggest difference in a beyond burger and a beef burger and somebody's going to tell me I'm wrong. I I was not prepped for this question, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> but I believe that the the reason that Beyond Meat and meat alternatives are becoming so popular in the marketplace is because the amount of natural resources that are required for a beef burger are significantly higher than uh, for a plant-based burger. So if uh, there are calculations and graphics 
that I don't have in front of me about how much water, how much grass, how much re how many resources are required to produce a beef burger versus a beyond burger. So it's really more of a resource cost. Um, but at the end of the day, beyond products really weren't developed for vegans. They were developed to appeal to meat eaters. And, so, and because they're because they're made from from vegetables, which cost which is more um, um, friendly for the environment, um, and 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 stuff. So, you know, if if more more people eat uh, vegetables and stuff rather than meat, then we don't have to raise so many cows. And so, because cattle, I'm told, is one of the larger reasons for uh, global warming because because of their flatulence and exactly stuff. i know the i didn't want to mention the methane gas because i figured you might take that and run with it but um <laughs> just it, 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 you never know <laughs> i know i know um you know if you look at how many cows i like i said there are metrics and graphics that i don't that i'm not privy to right now but about how many what acreage it requires to feed x number of cows to produce x number of burgers i mean at the end of the day it's coming down i think people you know i think we've spoken before about of all the negatives that came out of covid there there were a lot of positives um in my opinion yep, in my I opinion agree. um agree. people became more aware of their food supply chain because they had to because suddenly you know i mean it's real and you some people could suggest or or theorize that that you know we're still using covid for supply chain issues neither here nor there for this conversation but people are increasingly more aware about their supply chain groceries i don't know about in the northwest but i was just having a conversation this morning about the cost of groceries oh it's crazy through the roof through the roof you know so the argument used to be made like oh i'll stop eating meat because it's more affordable to eat vegetables my mind is blown that i looked at my produce list today and be, do you have cauliflower do you have broccoli i'm like i can't buy cauliflower at eight dollars a head and charge you what i need to to make money off of that like so we don't have cauliflower right now you know so it's it's been it's interesting to me you know i didn't come into this business as a grocery buyer um i've told you before i was a journalism major with a marketing background and a passion for healthy eating um <laughs> and now here we are as, as a, at the helm of a health food store but it's been such a blessing and such a learning experience on so many levels eight dollars a head cost so what are you going to buy a head of cauliflower for eleven dollars i don't think so well you would you order... you're not doing it you're not even going to pay eight dollars i'm not going to pay eight dollars for a head of cauliflower <laughs> so i'm i'm not because no that's crazy that, that's exactly right although i do have to tell you as far as meat goes have you ever been to a slaughter plant Kevin, I'm going to be really forthcoming with you. I grew up in Georgia and okay. I grew up, I grew up eating, um, what my father killed or caught. So I, as a young child have vivid memories of him cleaning a deer hanging from my swing set. <laughs> So maybe that's maybe that's something I'll unpack with um my my coach Allison Roberts at another time. Um but you know there was for me growing up there was a connection to the food. Now we didn't have a garden. We weren't those people and it was more of a recreational thing for my father. But I grew up eating venison that he killed in the woods or fish that he caught while we went when we went fishing. So there was always a connection to food me personally my body does not process beef very well and i you know i after i went to college and became an adult like steak burgers okay these things are luxuries but now people are starting to understand when i don't feel good what might i be able to eliminate what doesn't benefit my body 
and red meat is usually one of the first things that people will cut out. So kudos to companies like Beyond Meat who are seeking to produce alternatives and reduce sort of that global impact of eating red meat. And, and yeah, anyway, so, I mean, if somebody brought me some venison right now, I would jump up and down and be so happy because it's lean in Georgia. I mean, I was just up there last month and I was terrified driving at night because I'm like, I'm going to hit a deer and, and ruin my car. And how will I get back to Florida? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's a real problem up there. The overpopulation of, of deer. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I, I, prior to doing this, I was in the food business. And That's so right. I, was, I recall that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was, I was district sales manager for a major food company and we took our sales guys up to a slaughter plant. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you get the impression when somebody, when you go to one of those places, you, or, or just in general, at least I always did that you assume that, you know, a cow is just a dumb animal and that they don't really know what's going on and and that it it doesn't matter well it does because there is a there's a ramp what they do is they they lead the cows one at a time up this ramp and then there's a guy at the end of the ramp he's got a um it's a kind of like a hammer thing that's got a uh, mm. uh a 22 he loads it with a 22 he hits the cow on the top of his head, and then the cow, the, the, a metal rod goes into his brain about, oh, two or three inches. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I was watching, I specifically was watching the eyes of the next up and the one behind him. Mm -hmm. Because they, and I saw such sheer terror in their eyes because they knew they knew exactly what was about to happen to them. And mm -hmm. so it, I don't have the, the, I used to be like a prime rib guy and, a, and I and would eat a lot. I don't eat very much meat anymore. And, and part of that's for that, for that reason is that, and I also was a, um, a chicken guy. And uh, so I was a chicken salesman. And so I've seen lots of slaughterhouses with, with chicken and stuff. And, you know, if people, if more people knew what, what it was like, for the animals that we are raising to kill, um, I think it would change people's people's thoughts a little bit. At least I hope so. Even even just raise your awareness about it. Wasn't there was a movie, and I remember seeing it when I went when I was living in New York, and I remember getting walking out of the theater in Union Square and getting on the subway. I lived in Sunnyside Queens, just across the 59th Street Bridge, and I remember getting on the train in Union Square and going. I was, I was either shaking or crying and the movie had Javier Bardem in it. And when you just described that scene, I remember that it was, oh, was it? Oh my goodness. I can't think of it. If anybody comes up with it, I want to say no country for old men. Is that, is that, is that right? Oh, it could be, could be. Yes. No, no country for old men. And Javier Bardem had that particular tool that you just mentioned. And I think that you're exactly right, Kevin. If, if people had a greater connection to their food, they would have a better understanding, even if they didn't choose to go exclusively plant-based, there would be an awareness of it and just conscious, you know, like, so what I think there are statistics and again, I should have been better prepared with these, but if we, if everyone ate if everyone observed Meatless Monday, if everyone ate one plant-based meal a week, the global impact that we could have on that. And, and you know, there are studies about um, cultures and communities in China and India that, that observe primarily plant-based diets. And there's scientific evidence to the longevity yep. that these communities have. So it's not simply an I love animals bleeding heart argument. There's an argument, there's there is a compelling argument for eating primarily plant-based and eating healthy to increase the your life expectancy. And not just increase your life expectancy, but increase the quality of your life while you are here. Because unfortunately so many people 
don't opt for healthier choices until there is no other choice. You're from the South. You grew I up am. in the South. Mm-hmm. And I, I know I've never been to Georgia, but I spent a lot of time in Arkansas and okay. Missouri and in and Texas and and those places. And they have a really unique diet in that it is very fat filled. It is lots of gravies, lots of, you know, one of their favorite things is country gravy over biscuits and that kind of thing. And, and so their diet isn't very healthy and they tend to be heavier people. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and stuff and, and they don't feel as well and they don't live as long and they get cancer a lot you know I, you, I'm, so i think plant-based is a better is really is honestly a better way to go so i'm gonna have to get i don't eat i eat steak maybe once uh, a month kind of thing but i'll have to get uh um i'll have to get beyond burgers and, and to give it a shot let's see if give it a try that. if yeah give it a try um and John says, you brought up a good point earlier. However, about the inflated cost and quality of food, many, many eat what they do, including cheap meat, because it's cheaper. He is absolutely right about that. Absolutely. Is, he, and, you know, um, I, I, my, I had kind of this whole outline about things that I wanted to cover and, and why I think, you know, we should say no to resolutions. Um, because at the end of the day, when we talk about, I'm going to resolve to live a healthier life. Um, and you know, you can hire a health coach like myself. I just quick, quick correction. I'm not a nutritionist. I like eating healthy, but I'm not a certified nutritionist. I I say that I'm a wellness advocate. Um, Well, I will, I will tell you that I know what it's like to operate a shop like the one that you're operating and you probably have more knowledge floating around in your brain than (laughs) a lot of nutritionists I know, because you also are focused on, uh, natural eating. Yeah. And and there's a collective knowledge and energy here. Um, you know, I, I help coach clients on, um, healthy eating programs. Um, but it's so much more than that. And because people are attracted to the programs that I help clients on with weight loss, but people think that then, oh, you're a diet coach. Absolutely. 1000% not. Um, because, and this is why talking about resolutions is just, it, it's, it's just not a good idea. The first thing that you need to identify if it's, you know, you're jumping on the new year, new me bandwagon because it's January. Um, you need to identify why you want to get healthy. Why, why would you like to eat less red meat every, you know, why would, why would you be interested in trying beyond burgers, Kevin? Who me personally? Yeah. Well, first of all, I love, I love food technology. I, I, and, mm-hmm. uh, and what we are doing with it, I don't feel the I don't feel the compulsion. As a matter of fact, I have a steak that has been in my refrigerator for almost two weeks now, and I keep saying to myself, maybe I'll have that for dinner, and then I don't, and then I then you know and and stuff. And I live by myself, so you know it's it's. But I I'm interested in good food technology that we can move into the future with, because we're all going to have to. We're not going to be able to sustain what we're doing is non sustainable. Absolutely not. And I, and I, you know, that's, that steak is a great example of how you can make a healthier choice, Kevin. It's not about making healthy choices all the time and being perfect because perfection is an unattainable goal. And a mantra that I've sort of adopted for myself in my life's journey is progress over perfection. And as a recovering perfectionist, (laughs) um, you know, how could you take that steak and add in more vegetables? And instead of eating one big steak, sitting down to a meal of a steak and a baked potato, how could you cut that steak into thirds, marinate it and saute it with some vegetables for a stir fry one night, pop it in the oven with some peppers and onions for fajitas another night. And, you know, like, so it's about making healthier choices. And to John's point, making our food dollars go farther. Because I think that, despite what anybody's health picture looks like, 
is the biggest concern and struggle right now for so many people. And what it does is it forces, and to John's point as well, mm-hmm. it for it forces people into the center of the store. Have you ever noticed that the all the good stuff is on the outside of mm-hmm. of the aisles of the store? That's where the, your bakery is, and that's where your meat is, and your vegetables, and and your seafood, and all of that. On the inside is all the processed stuff. Absolutely. If you, as an example, if you're a single mom and you want to, ra- and you're raising three kids, and you've got a fixed income, and macaroni and cheese um, will fill up the kids, and it costs you three or four dollars to put that much on. The, so that's what you do. Um, Absolutely. And that's that. It's not good for anybody. Well, it's not good, but it's about balance. So even as the owner of a health food store confession time my six-year-old has pasta at pretty much every meal not gonna lie because i know that that's what she'll eat she also has and we talk with her about it what would you like you know giving a kid specifically and listen kudos to the single moms raising multiple kids because i have no idea how you do it and it's hard um kudos to every single mom out there and and people with two three four five six kids forget it like no idea how you do that but for me i can only speak for me we say you know yes you can have mac and cheese would you like and we figured out just through talking with her she likes raw vegetables i would cook vegetables and she's i don't want those guess what She talked about having squishy carrots at school. And in my mind, I'm going, are they feeding my child, like, old carrots? What's going on? No. To her, squishy carrots are cooked carrots. She likes raw carrots. She likes raw cucumbers. She also likes pickles. And in our house, we count pickles as a vegetable. Don't judge me. Um, (laughs) (laughs) But that's my point, is it's about balance. And I think that we get so in the mindset of extreme drastic changes that we're setting ourselves up for failure. So she might have, she's going to have some form of pasta on her plate. We try to get her to eat a little bit of protein. If that is frozen chicken nuggets every once in a while, she's eating, right? A healthy kid is a fed kid. Well, you know, do you uh, want, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, I was well, just going to say, want, you know, do you want cucumbers or carrots? And here's a little bit of fruit. So it's, it's about balance. Yeah. Well, and, and the thing is getting a six-year-old child to expand their diet, they don't understand that. They know what tastes good, what they like, and and they don't necessarily, they don't care about expanding their diet. Uh, but if you can introduce, I think you're doing the exact right thing. If you can introduce great foods a little bit at a time and give them the opportunity rather than do what my folks did, which was you're going to sit here until you eat what's on your plate and if you don't we're going to be here all night long and rather than you just you know that that doesn't make a lot of sense to me because that, that gives the kid the entire wrong message about what no and is. yeah and it creates a psychology around food also you know yeah. like i and and i and i can only say that because i've seen that firsthand um with my father who unfortunately has been diagnosed and is battling um, Alzheimer's and um, age-related dementia. So, but it's very interesting to to understand some of the strange things that he did and does are a result of childhood conditioning. And we do the things that we do. Why? We don't know because it was what our parents did, right? So that's a very interesting point, Kevin, that it's not pleasant for me or my husband to sit there and try to, you know, (laughs) eat your food. That is not the way I want to spend my couple of precious hours with her every evening. Not the way I want to spend it. So, you know, she's probably going to be an attorney because that child loves to negotiate. (laughs) If you eat these two bites of chicken, you can be done. Eat three more bites of cucumber. You know what? And at the end of the day, if a fed child is a is a healthy child. So it, it is, I think it's about balance and it's about giving yourself grace. Um, 
but yeah, you know, it's, it's not easy. We're all doing the best we can, right? Well, that's a, that's at the end of the day, that's all you can do is the best you can. Mm-hmm. And, and, Absolutely. and the other thing is if you, if you decide at the, at the beginning of the year, okay, I'm going to eat nothing that's bad for me. I'm going to give up chocolate. I'm going to do gonna all happen. of the, you, you're setting yourself up to fail and you're not going to have a very good time before you fail. Cause no. <laughs> you know, so just relax. And <laughs> I had my son, and- t- I and just real quick. I had my son tell me, I, I, I said, uh, Gosh, you need to lose weight this year. And he said, Dad, I said, yes, son. He said, you're 65 years old. Nobody cares. And <laughs> just like, well, but I'd like to live to be 66. And he said, well, they care about that. But as far as you going on a vegan diet or something, you know, no, you don't, you don't need to do any of that kind of stuff. Just eat a little bit better and, and enjoy your life because, um, you know, yeah, you we had a there's a there's a guy in seattle i don't know if you've ever been here but uh, I have, yeah um 2011 we did a cross-country road trip so oh, cool. we spent, yeah we spent a little bit of time in the pacific northwest it's amazingly beautiful out there it, it really is it, it, before i tell this story i gotta tell this story i it, it, <laughs> i picked up a couple of guys from arkansas that worked in the uh, uh with me they were sales guys in the in the chicken company mm-hmm. and of course in arkansas they have Ch- chickers and 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 um what do you what do you call them um, moles or not moles um um ticks and all that kind of oh, stuff yeah. mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. i picked i picked them up in portland and i drove them to seattle and they were marveling at how green it was and and the one guy looked at me and he goes you mean to tell me that if i went in those woods right there that i wouldn't get any chickers or any any of that stuff and and, the, and there's no there's no um um spiders and there's no snakes. I said, well, that's that's true, but don't tell anybody because people will move here if you. Do. <laughs> <laughs> but it's 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 different how they how they live in other parts of the anyway. So uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just <laughs> lost my mind for a second. No, it's fine. It was completely entertaining, but yeah, you know, um, it's. And it's, you know, going back, Kevin, to what you said about um, about people enjoying biscuits and gravy and very heavy foods. Um, if you're ever curious, there's a, a wonderful collaborative of writing um, and just ex- exploration of all things Southern. Um, check out The Bitter Southerner. Um, I started following them, uh, college roommates mom's friend they're based in atlanta and they have an amazing collection of writers um who document um you know life in the south and it's interesting um to understand southern food culture Mm -hmm. that you know the biscuits and the gravy and the very heavy foods are exactly your to your point about um a single mother raising multiple children those foods are cheap yes and um you know i get uh, is vegetable envy a thing i don't know but i get vegetable envy every summer when in south florida it's way too hot to grow anything and particularly here in the keys um where you know we live on coral rock and soil is a very precious thing So it's very difficult for us to grow things like this is our growing season, as it were. And things that grow here in South Florida are very different, maybe than what my friends who live in Georgia and other parts of the South are growing in the summertime. Like, I mean, if you have ever had a tomato sandwich in the peak of summertime, there is just and it sounds crazy, but a tomato sandwich, thick sliced tomato with salt and pepper and duke's mayonnaise if if you've got that but if you know somebody who makes homemade mayonnaise like my grandma used to <gasps> on and don't tell don't tell anyone but white bread <laughs> it's really the best it's best on white bread a tomato sandwich in the peak of summertime is like one of is uh, there's core memories around that for me so so that that cheap food that is so reputed in the south is based in affordability and feeding a lot of people 
and yep. sustaining them. So what what's going to fill up a, a, a belly before it goes out to work in the fields or, or, you know, run as children do play in the woods, biscuits and gravy. And that's, you know, like we're so accustomed now to eat high protein diets, which we need. But the high protein if we're on our feet a lot, we have very physical jobs, then that's when we need to increase our protein intake. If we're sedentary, like a lot of us are currently in our lifestyles, maybe we can cut back on some of the protein or maybe look to complex proteins, complex plant-based proteins, nuts, seeds, rice, beans, things like that. There's more health benefits to that. And mixing up some good sauces, finding good spice blends, we can do that a lot easier than we might think. If we think, oh, I'm going to go, I'm going to stop eating meat and go completely plant-based. Holy cow, that's overwhelming. But if we can make small, small habit changes, like one day a week, having your family have a meatless meal, that can have such a huge impact on our health and the planet. I know. I agree. I I agree totally. And, you know, Mm -hmm. I learned about, the the differences between between geographical areas my son was dating a girl that was uh she came from st louis and they okay. came from the, the poor area of st louis and uh, one night i brought home a it was a small roast but it was a top sirloin roast and it was very yeah. good quality and and very little fat and it's one of those that you want to cook medium rare. You want to put you know, some garlic and some pepper and stuff on the outside, make a nice little crust to it. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then it's medium rare. And um, I pulled it out of the oven. And she said, that ain't cooked yet. And I said, <laughs> well, I said, well, it's, it's, it's a roast. It's, it's designed to be, not, it's got to be cooked more than that. You got to cook it all the way through. You're going to get worms eating that. <laughs> so it's like, you don't. Have you ever had prime rib? No, because that's expensive. But she, Mm -hmm. so what she was talking about was um, pot roast. Right, exactly. You get the pot roast and you cook the crap out of it for hours until it falls apart, but Mm -hmm. it's all brown and Mm -hmm. stuff. And and stuff. So that, because it's cheaper. It's a, you use a chuck roast or a chuck steak, and it's a lot Throw cheaper. Throw some potatoes than... and carrots in there, and you can feed a family of six. You yes. know, and that and that's and that was kind of a luxurious meal. I mean, I could still jam with a nice pot roast and carrots and potatoes. Don't get me wrong. I should. I'll send you. I was very nervous. I keep talking about southern food. So, do you know anything about southern food traditions for New Year's Day? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. Well, I'm going to enlighten you, my friend. (laughs) Um, I grew up on New Year's Day. You had to eat greens and you had to eat peas and you had to eat pork. And I think cornbread's in there somewhere. I'm not sure of the symbolism behind it, but greens were your dollars. Peas, black eyed peas. I did black eyed peas and field peas this year. And yes, I use glory brand from a can because I am not cooking peas from scratch. I don't even know if I could find dried black eyed peas here, but anyway, balance. Um, so greens and I did collard greens and I did them vegan because let me tell you how good greens are with miso. Now I grew up, if you're going to make greens, you had to boil the crap out of them all day long until your house smelled horrible. And there better be a giant ham hock in there and they were good. But you can saute collard greens very lightly and a little bit of olive oil. Butter is better. It tastes better, but you can do olive oil or coconut oil and keep it plant-based. Mix in a little bit of miso and water and just cook them for an hour and they're beautiful. And they retain more of their health benefits than if you were to cook them all day. But I'm making a long story longer. On New Year's Day, you had pork for prosperity, greens for the dollars, and peas were the corn. Uh, Peas were the coins. Coins. Sorry. Coins. 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 Yes. So my husband um, fished a charter on New Year's Day, and I was very nervous to make ribs because I've never made ribs before, but I consulted with a um, friend's husband, and he said, you know, three hours in the oven, finish them on the grill. My husband had done a nice um, rub that I happened to find in the cabinet and I covered those ribs in this rub. 
and I did the most amazing pork ribs for New Year's Day. I'll send you a photo. They were beautiful. But I ate three giant ribs because I made this beautiful plate and I'm conditioned. Finish your plate, right? We don't leave right. we don't leave food on our plate. I was so full. But anyway, <laughs> it was delicious and I was very proud of my ribs. Not something that I do all the time. But on New Year's Day, it's tradition. You do it. They were delicious. And I probably won't have ribs again for a while. <laughs> well, and, you know, another big day that's coming up that uh, a lot of people um, really do a lot of cooking for is the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a it's a wing day. It's it's a dip day. It's it's all of those kind of things. And you can you can really do some really looking for a great recipe. You can find some really cool things to do with with dips and, and that kind of stuff that isn't horrible, horrible for you. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, but it's 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 fun. So you did you did pork ribs. Have you ever had beef ribs? Oh, yeah. I love beef ribs. I'm not allowed to have them anymore, but I just love them. My husband gleams with pride every time his six-year-old <laughs> picks up a rib and eats it like a caveman. He's, <laughs> he's very proud of that, yes. But um, it, it's a special occasion thing because talk about the cost of food and wings in the Super Bowl. Um, have you bought wings lately? No. The, it, no well, you know what? Um, I... You, I'll buy occasionally if, if I've had a couple of beers. I might go to Seven <laughs> Eleven and get and get a couple of uh, uh, buffalo wings, and they're they're like seven dollars for five of them. Um, yeah, I remember when I was in the restaurant business in the early '80s. I used to buy wings and give them away in the bar. They were a mm -hmm. buck a pound. Yeah, that was the bar food that you kept people drinking with, right? That's exactly right. And and yeah. you put it on a little buffet and then and it's there and they don't have to go right away and they wait and they have another let's have another beer before we go to the buffet. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, that's how For, we made next, money. The next the next time you go shopping, because you're not eating all of your meals at seven eleven, I hope, right, Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 um, no, no. No, no. The no, next no. time you are cruising the grocery store, if you still do that, because I know that a lot of people like to Instacart now, which Again, that's going to, if we, if we continue to become complacent about the cost of food, it's, ah, it just keeps getting more and more expensive. Yes, it does. Because you have to stay aware, I believe. Next time you're in the grocery store, cruise by the meat counter and check out the price of wings. It's insane. Like, I, and you know, down here in South Florida, um, like oxtails used to be a really cheap cut of meat, right? Like, like that pot roast, you boil, you know, you. I, I, I've never cooked oxtails. That's my husband's thing. They're delicious. But it's a rich, um, that used to be the cheap thing, oxtails. Go look at the price of oxtails. It's like these cheap cuts of meat are like in vogue. Uh, in vogue, I don't know. But they're, even what used to be the cheapest thing has become quite expensive. So it's, it's not easy. It, mm, no. It's not as challenging. Uh, anyway, I lost my train of thought. Too much coffee, Kevin. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, speaking of which, I, I, I live alone. I have for, uh, let's see, I, I was divorced in 2007. And I, I've been, so I live with my kids or, or by myself. Like that whole mm -hmm. And so I don't go to the grocery store. Um, I have an Amazon fulfillment center that's right down the, the street. Um, okay. basically. And so I will order stuff from Amazon of what, what I'm going to eat. And then they have mm -hmm. a pretty, pretty good selection. And so I ordered stuff today. And so I was doing an interview with somebody and, and I get a notification, your food has arrived. Now what they do now is they just take it and they, and they box it up and then they put it on your porch and then they leave. And uh, so I go out and there's nothing there. And it's a hundred dollars worth of stuff. And so I call customer service and they were very, very nice. And then they called the driver and the driver said, now get this. This is the kind of society we live in now. The driver said, well, I dropped it off and I gave it to the lady that was there. He mm. dumped the wrong address. Mm. Now I, I said, well, you know, that's interesting because um, I live alone. But is she cute? <laughs> You know, and, is she making the dinner for me? Because that would be amazing. <laughs> exactly. And, and so 
Um, uh, think of, but think about the thought process that this person went through. The Amazon delivery driver pulls up and she comes out of the house. He drops the groceries off. She says they're hers and they don't belong to her at all. Yet she would do that anyway. Um, that's, that's the kind of society we, that we live in. These It's crazy. It's, it's just crazy. But at the end of the story, Amazon uh, is replacing the order. It'll be here in an hour. So I'm curious, Kevin. So you order your food from Amazon. Are you what 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 does your Amazon order look like? Um, I know that's a very personal question. <laughs> well, uh, let's see. I, you mean outside of the uh, Reese's peanut butter cups? Uh, <laughs> well, you see, because I live alone um, and I don't want to cook a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. I've, I've for a while I was doing, it's called Freshly, and they've got out of business now. Uh, but they would deliver um, individual meals mm -hmm. and 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 stuff and they're balanced meals and stuff but there's one that you can get on uh, the frozen ones that that's got think healthy or get healthy mm -hmm. or and and they're they're just uh individual meals and i just pop them in the microwave and and stuff because i don't want to i don't want to cook i used to go and buy a whole chicken and then i would cook a chicken stick it in the refrigerator and eat it for a week uh, mm -hmm. but I, I don't do that anymore because it's it's that's still too much um so I, I don't you know and these are like 350 calories the salt content isn't very high see i i do read I, I feel like you're having to defend yourself here and i and i don't want i don't i'm curious because um if you're I, i'm i've wondered about this because obviously subscription-based meal services are hugely popular because what is the what is the most precious commodity that we have right now what was, what i'm what, Go ahead. No. What What's the most precious commodity we have right now? Um, money. <laughs> I. Yes, but what do we give? What do we give so much of ourselves for? For money. Uh, service. Time. Oh, time. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha, um, gotcha, gotcha. So you know, we give our time in exchange for a paycheck, right? Um, and yes. we and I was having a couple of conversations today with customers. I see so many customers in our store who are struggling with sleep and I'm part of a group who is, you know, as part of health coaching, doing a healthy reset. And I look at the criteria for being part of this, for participating in this group. And it was 12 hours between dinner and breakfast, three hours between dinner and your bedtime. But the focus indirectly was on sleep. Mm -hmm. And we are, we have become so conditioned that, you know, we're working remotely, we're available 24 hours a day. We can, we can run, on, I, I can run on four hours of sleep, right? No, I cannot. I am a monster and I need my sleep. <laughs> and it's particularly relevant right now because I had a customer point out today, we have these beautiful full moon calendars and they're a lovely reference because you can tell exactly when the full moon's gonna be every be every month. When is everybody gonna be crazy? When are your kids gonna be nuts? When are customers gonna be extra demanding? It's, it's very interesting. But I couldn't sleep the other night and I happened to peek through the curtains and I'm like, full moon yeah. gets me every month. But we have so devalued sleep as part of our routines and, it, you know, everybody wants to get healthy, new year, new me. But I think at the end of the day, taking it back to basics and prioritizing sleep, prioritizing water, eating whole food and reducing, not cutting out completely. But I was going to talk about, you know, smart goals and having specific, measurable, achievable, realistic and timely goals. Don't cut things out completely because that's not fun and you're going to fail. Can I have one less cup of coffee? Can I have one less drink? Can I have one meat-free meal? Can I get one more hour of sleep a night? Mm -hmm. What are the little bitty things, the habits and choices that we can tweak to improve our life? I think that's, that, that is really sound, marvelous advice. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, and you're right, sleep is a huge... And it's a huge obstacle for some folks. It is. And, 
Well, and I'll tell you, um, as an example, my sister, who is four and a half, five years older than me, has had like 13 or 14 surgeries. Mm-hmm. She's had three on her neck. She has had both her hips replaced, both her knees replaced. Um, she's becoming bionic. But one of the byproducts of that is she can't sleep in the same position all night long because after about an hour and a half, the pain becomes intense. So she has to wake up and move. So she never, she never gets more than, well, she was telling me the other day, more than like two hours at a time. And she takes a a leave, uh, like eight a leave. You're supposed to take two every, it takes like eight a leave just to get through the night and stuff. And there are people that are like that. And it's, it's really is hard, but if she could find a better way, and I've, we've talked about CBD. We've talked about a bunch of different stuff that could help her. Um, and, you know, it's because there are lots of people that that's like. So she she just doesn't leave, lead a very full life because she's always in pain. Two hours of two hour increments of sleep never allows your body to get into that REM sleep. And that REM sleep is so important for our full systems to recover. Yes, I can function on four to five hours of sleep a night is every, is it safe for everyone else? No, absolutely not. You know, um, while, while we can, we have, we have jeopardized the expectations that we put on our body. And I'm so sorry for your sister because two hour increments of sleep never allows her body that chance to rest and recover. And I can't imagine having to wake up every hour to change positions. Yeah. Yeah. That's and, crazy. and, uh, I've had I've had both of my hips replaced. We have we have kind of a, a unique uh, um, c- condition and arth- or a um, inflammatory system condition mm-hmm. that uh, causes like like I have uh, uh, gout occasionally and and stuff and that's why I can't have pork. That's why that's really honestly is why the uh, Beyond Burgers interest me really because that doesn't have any animal fat. Have you ever and tried tart cherry juice? I have. Okay. <laughs> Hold on, I'll, I can walk you down my aisles and give you all my recommendations for gout products. <laughs> well, and you know, it's it is really a lot more pronounced for a lot of people than than in, in it's an inflammatory condition, mm-hmm. and and I don't know if it's environmental or and part of it is what we eat and and you know and stuff like that, but. Uh, have you ever noticed that the list of foods that you're not supposed to eat is really kind of your favorite stuff? It's uh, yes. So if we were to drop the lid to our water bottle, um, <laughs> if we were to decrease those things, <coughs> if you were to track and be very honest with yourself about how often you hold on just a moment, Kevin. getting in my water because i've been talking too much um if we were to be honest about how how often we have those things i mean water i ask people all the time that's one of the first things i ask them i can't sleep i want to lose weight i'm groggy i don't have enough energy how much water do you drink are you taking a good multivitamin and do you have a probiotic baseline um, but if we were to be honest with ourselves and, and really keep track of how often we do things if we could cut it back just a little bit. So, okay. I'm going to, and, and, and we're human. So we're, it's behavioral. I, I have my steak every Friday night with a glass of red wine and I'm not giving that up. Okay. Don't, don't give that up. If you could exchange a reward system for yourself, because we are so inclined and that's a conditioning from childhood to use food as a reward system. If we reward ourselves with food, could we find something else that we like, something else that brings us pleasure and exchange that habit that doesn't serve our body? You know, every time, and I say this to clients all the time and they think I'm nuts and I'm okay. It's okay. Cause I am a little nuts. Um, if when I get home, I have to have that glass of wine. What if instead you need that glass of wine? Why to relax You're stressed out work? God, that, mean colleague that you have that customer who just wouldn't close you got to sued with that glass of wine what if instead you put on your walking shoes and you walked around the block 
what if you took what if you took one reward behavior for yourself and exchanged it for something else just an idea something great, small that we can do for ourselves it's a, it's a, it's a really is a great idea and if people could do that they would be a lot better off but you know what speaking of being better off it is um now seven o'clock your time and, is, and because Kevin. you you are in the keys and it's uh the sun has gone down it's still nice and warm oh it's my dark goodness. out there it's dark here but yeah i i wouldn't want to rub into you what the temperature is out there i'm sure it's very nice you can see that i'm wearing short sleeves in january so <laughs> <laughs> i can and i can indeed but you have a six-year-old and a husband who adores you at home and i don't want to keep you any longer but well can you i i really really enjoy talking to you blair and by the way john if you're still listening where the hell you been you need to you need to come back and be on the show again <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll I'll follow up with him on that, Kevin. It is always so much fun to chat with you. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me and giving me the opportunity to chat. Um, I look forward to doing it again soon. And I know I have several of my colleagues who, when I said I would not be in our group meeting tonight, said, oh, "Ooh, I need to schedule another call with him." So I will nudge them to get on your calendar. Thank you so much for having me, and I look forward to doing it again soon. I, I just, I adore you. I think that I think you, and we've got, <laughs> we've got so much more that we can talk about and it's, it's just, it's just a lot of fun. And I believe that these episodes are, are really listenable and, uh, cause Thanks. we talk about all kinds of stuff. We do. We, we, we run the gamut from body painting to red meat and exercise, don't we? <laughs> Ex exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just, I just had a thought. Yes. I want to know who the individual is who do actually does the body painting. Somebody who probably travels around to these festivals that we speak of and makes a lot of money. But you know what? I tell you, kudos to them because it ain't me who's going to be down there <laughs> painting an old naked person. No, not going to do it. No, there, and there are certain, certain parts that should probably just not be painted. I mean, you can't dictate the cleanliness and hygiene of someone who's been drinking all day, can you? Am I going to take a, a paintbrush to them? No, I'll I'll leave that to the expert. So kudos it, to those people. It, and the, the only way that I would do it is if you could have a spray paint from like a, a dozen people. Actually, you know what? I think, it, truth be told, I think it is spray paint. So there's probably a great ability to maintain some distance from said body parts. So, yeah. Uh, they are they are truly Google Fantasy Fest, and there are some works of art, but it's there. Like I said, some things can't be unseen. So, um, yeah. Google Fantasy Fest. I, I'll do that. By the way, if you want to find out more about her, about uh, Blair and and her sh her store, Food for Thought florida keys.com flkeys.com mm -hmm. yes flkeys.com and uh and it's a beautiful store you do a great job there it's thank it's, you kevin we have an amazing team here and you know why you have an amazing team because you put it together because i'm trying to build a life i love <laughs> thank you so much kevin have a wonderful evening i look forward to doing it again soon take care of yourself Thank you very much. And you too. She's kicking me off my own show. I can't believe it. <laughs> Wait right there. I'll be right back. Hey, thanks for enjoying this episode all the way to the end. Please give us a like and subscribe to this channel. This has been a production of PositiveTalkRadio.net. Please visit our website, oddly named PositiveTalkRadio.net, for more details about us and our mission, which is to provide great positive programming designed to inspire us all. I'm Kevin McDonald, and I'm proud of these shows, and I truly hope that you'll like them and share them with friends and family. So on behalf of our entire team, remember, be kind to one another.